Hey, welcome back to Tiger Tech Videos. In this video, what I want to do is help you set up your YouTube channel so that you'll be able to create playlists that archive all the different video clips you might use in your lessons. So I'm going to show you how easy this is to set up, and I'm going to show you a couple little tricks and tips along the way so that you can be using YouTube a little bit more efficiently and you're going to be able to use it commercial free also. I'll show you a tip on getting rid of the commercials that sometimes can be a little distracting when you're trying to show a video clip from YouTube. All right, so we'll start from the beginning here and I want you to go to Google Chrome and you can type in at the top. You can see it's flashing here at the top. Just type in YouTube. Once you open YouTube, I want you to go to the right hand side of the screen over here and you're going to see over here, there's going to be an avatar for your account. I want you to click that. And this is a new one I just set up as an example, and I'm calling it Fleetwood Coaches. So right here, you want to just verify that this is your actual Fleetwood account, and this is your Fleetwood login. Creating the channel is as easy as clicking this button right here where it says Create Channel. So I'm going to do that next. So you should see this welcome screen pop up, and you can click on Get Started. Next it says use your name or do you want to have a custom name for your channel. So what you're going to do as a classroom teacher in this case is you would just hit select here for just using your name. And then you should get a screen confirming that you now have a channel set up. The reason that you're setting up this channel is that allows you to make playlists and that's going to be the most important thing as a classroom teacher where you're going to be able to save your clips, organize them by topic, and then you'll have easy access to them anytime you want to. Um, or for the following year, if you want to remember what clips that I used for a certain unit, you'll have those all archived. Also on the screen, you have the option to upload a picture for your profile, so you can do that at this time. You can also at any time click on the avatar within Google, and you'll be able to have that option to change your picture if you want to. Okay, so I have a profile picture in place. You can add extra information down here, but that's not necessary for what we need to do in this video. Um, I'm going to hit save and continue at the bottom. So really the point of this was to be able to create playlists. So let me show you how to do that. So let's say I was looking up TED Talks um, Motivation. And I found this TED Talk that I really liked. Um, I clicked on it and it was this psychology professor from Virginia Tech talking about motivation. And what you're going to see is right here at the bottom of the video, any video should have this symbol here with three lines and a plus. So click on that and then this will pop up and it says where do you want to save it to? Do you want to put it in your watched later list or create a new playlist? So I'm going to create a new playlist. I'm going to call it motivational. And I'm going to hit create. Okay, so now it says on the side it popped up and said it's added to the motivational playlist. So let's say I found some other ones I liked. Let's say there was this video that I liked. Um, even, even if the videos are right here and you know this is something that would fit, you can go over here to where there's these three dots, click on that, and it'll say, do you want to save to playlist? And then I can say, yeah, and then I can check this box, and it will pop up and say, add it to the motivational playlist. Okay, so how do you find your playlist? At any time, you could go over and click on your icon and click on where it says your channel here. And when you click on your channel, you'll see playlists right here. You can click on playlists and it says it shows you the videos that are in the playlist. OK, so I have another search here and I like this one. And so what I can do is let's say I clicked on this video and I really like this one. You can add it again like we did right here with this symbol Computers have or you can go back and you can go to these three dots right here on the right and then you can add it from there to a playlist like we did before. Um, you can hit save to playlist and you can create a new playlist at this point too. So let's say I said instructional technology for this one. And it creates. So you'll start to add a list of playlists that you have as part of your channel. To show you some playlists that I already have set up, I went to my other account. You can switch accounts in YouTube by going over to the right hand side and if you click on your picture and you go down, you'll see switch account right here. So if you click on switch account, you'll be able to switch through other accounts that you have set up. Now that I'm in my Fleetwood account, I can show you some of the playlists that I had set up for my science classes. And to do that, I'm gonna go over here to the left-hand side 
and you're gonna see these three lines right here next to where it says YouTube. I'm gonna click on that and it brings up this menu. And if you look on this menu here, right here, you'll see it says forces and fluids, simple machines. And if I click on show more right there, I'm gonna see other ones that I have set up. Now, if I click on any of these, these are the playlists. So each one of these is a playlist. And then that playlist will have a group of videos. So if I click on forces and fluids, for example, you can see some of the video clips I used within my lessons to explain some of these concepts. So there's a lot of other things that you can do with your playlists. You can put descriptions in there, you can edit different features of them, and you can actually share the playlist group of videos with your students on Google Classroom. You could share it on a website if you have a Google site or a teacher website, things like that. You could email it if you needed to. So by setting it up this way, you have for yourself sort of a library or archive of video clips that you used and that way you can find them every year and it's organized. Another way that you can see all these videos in one place is if you go over to your picture and click on that and then click on where it says your channel at the top. And that'll take you to this page and on this page you're going to be able to see any uploads that you have. You can see I've uploaded some videos here and then it also will give you created playlists and it gives you kind of a summary of some of those playlists. The other thing I didn't mention is the subscription feature, and that feature is where someone will subscribe to your channel or you can subscribe to another channel, and that gives you the option to be notified if they put out future videos. If you click on the subscriptions tab, it will show you all of the different videos put out by the people you've subscribed to. So it's a way to stay on top of new videos that people are putting out that could be for your content area. All right, we're gonna wrap this video up, but I wanna show you one other tip that'll help you get rid of commercials that can be really annoying when you're trying to show a video clip in class. So to do that, I want you to open up another tab and I want you to do a search for uBlock Origin. So if you click on uBlock Origin right here, it'll pop up, it says Google Chrome. This is an extension that you're gonna to add to your Google Chrome browser that will block the commercials. So I already have mine in there. Yours will say add to Chrome probably, but mine says remove from Chrome because I already have it enabled. So you wanna click on add to Chrome. And then when you're done with that, I'm gonna close this out. When you're done with that, up here it'll appear, and I'm gonna zoom in there so you can see this. And it shows you how many commercials were blocked or other pop-ups that were blocked right there. So it, it just stays active in the background. You don't have to do anything, but every time you open Chrome, it should be working and it will block all those commercials. So that's a, a tip that will really save you some frustration, especially if you're getting commercials that aren't appropriate for your, your students to see um, or are a distraction. All right, I hope that video was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. You can always email me at kbolendorf at fleetwoodasd.org. Until next time, have a great day.